Hi, and welcome to episode two of the Flying Yak Podcast. Today is Thursday, May 5th, and I'm your host, Chantel. You can find me on Instagram at the underscore flying underscore yak. This week, I will be talking to you about my whips and FOs. There isn't much spinning or any spinning at all this week because I was just kind of in crazy cast on sweater mode. Um, this week, I am wearing a hat that doesn't have a pattern. It is just a very slouchy beanie made out of a single skein of Aula Foslupe, the from Eastex, uh, in green. It There's only one shade of this green. And also this is the Dahlia cardigan by Heather Zapetti out of Madeline Tosh Marina Light in the filigree colorway. There's a lace panel on the back. It's really pretty. Uh, this week I'm podcasting on a Thursday just because today is a calendar holiday. So I had the day off today and I don't have the day off on Friday. So I just decided to squeeze it in before I got too busy and just decided not to podcast, which was very, very possible to have. So as I was saying earlier, I'm in crazy sweater cast-on mode right now. I cast on two sweaters this week, and they are both yellow, and they are both cardigans, and I'm going to start off with the first one. The first one is the Portage uh, cardigan from Melissa Sch- Oh no, Flash Shwashwari. Flash war. Oh man, I should only knit things by easy named people. But it's Melissa Shwashwari, who I'm going to call Mal. So this pattern I am knitting out of the Madeline Tosh DK in the chamomile colorway. So I ordered eight skeins of this. It's not coming across quite as bright as it is. Maybe I bring it. That's more accurate. But it is a very, very bright yellow. It looks more eggy here, but it's just a, the only way you can describe it is yellow. It's extremely yellow. I'm very pleased with it. Each skein has 205 meters to the 100 grams and about eight. So I just have a lot of it. Uh, I kind of played yarn chicken, but they only had eight skeins in stock and I needed 8.2. So I might, might be in a little bit of trouble. But we'll see. Uh, yeah, I did wind them into cakes, like this one. So I prefer working from a cake. Some people prefer a hand-wound ball. It's not. I like that it sits and I just kind of pull out of it. So I wound most of them, except one to show you guys. Um, got that done. And this is how much I have so far. It is a top-down raglan construction, so... This is the front of the sweater, and as you can see, there's this beautiful cable panel in the back, which I'm obsessed with. It looks like, it kind of looks like honeycombs from up close. I'm really, I, I'm really in love with it. I'm not usually a cables person, but I just fell in love with the construction of the sweater, and so I decided it's just the back panel. It doesn't count. I'll get it done in no time. And it's just been flying by. They're, what they are is a one by one cable. So you do a right leaning one and a left leaning one over each other. And it makes these nice little circles. I don't think that's the secret sauce at all. It's just one by one cables. Uh, it's been going well. I just cast it on. I got the yarn in the mail on Tuesday or Monday. And I've been going a little crazy on it. I really love it. It's going quickly. I have one stitch too many in one of the front panels. So I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get rid of that stitch. At some point, I'm not ready to deal with it. But it's okay. Mistakes happen. It's one stitch. I haven't messed up a single cable yet, knock on wood. So look at that. I'm so proud of myself. It's bound to happen. But I really like how this yarn is variegated. It's just very lightly variegated, you can see here. So it's really adding depth to these cables, which are amazingly smushy. I just want to squeeze them. I think I would like to make like a dishcloth out of this one by one cable. 
just because it's so dense that I feel like it would it's just what I look for in a dishcloth that like mushy feeling so I might try that just cast on like 40 stitches and just make this pattern on it that would be really nice so it's cardigan one uh, I'm almost at the split for the armpit I have another four rows to go before I split for the armpit so that's gonna be nice it's getting too many stitches can't wait to it's always nice you have that hype of casting on and then you, you just I like top down because you just plow through all those big stitches those increases and then you lose 60 stitches on either side and then it's a normal number of stitches as you work down the body so that's not too bad this is sweater one uh, so this is the portage by Mal it's in the show notes it's spelt correctly in the show notes by which I mean I copy pasted it so there's a good chance it's spelled correctly if it's spelled correctly on Ravelry. Um, my second yellow cardigan of the week is a The Owl Cardigan by Marie Sheba out of, um, this is from the Interweaves Wizards collection. I have the book, uh, Knitting Wizardry. This one here. Uh, I got it for my birthday. I am very pleased. There are 27 pa patterns in it, which is which just feels like a lot. I'm not going to knit through the book by any means. I might knit two or three of the patterns from this, but this is the sweater. It's the owl cardigan. It's a long ribbing at the bottom, and there's also a picture of the front. It has some cute square pockets and a, a ton of buttons that I really like. I like when there are a lot of buttons over the bust because it doesn't make those weird bubbles if there aren't enough buttons. And there, there are two other pictures. There are a bunch of pictures in this book, which is really nice. So you get to see all the detailing and how it's built. There's yet another picture. There are so many pictures, which is great. I really like that. I need all the pictures I can get. Sometimes if you're just you have a little curious moment, I like having pictures there to help me out, help me through that. So, uh, there you go. I have a lot done on this too. I'm very, I was just completely in sweater mode. Uh, this color doesn't show quite right. It looks more brown and it's, it's not quite yellow. It's very like the color, this, oh, by the way, this is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the Hayloft colorway. So the name Hayloft really demonstrates the color more than it is. Um, Maybe if I bring it closer, there you go. It's a little closer. It's it's a little less brown than this, but that's pretty accurate. I bought it from the Brooklyn Tweed website, and on the website, it looks a lot more yellow than it is in real life. So I I, I wanted the yellow, but honestly, this is a beautiful color. It has little flecks of a bright yellow in it, and some orange, and I'm really enjoying that. This is a this is spun woolen in the US and I think it's a tarhi so it's really it's it's not it's not nearly as soft as the Madeline Tosh from the other cardigan but I think the bounce of the yarn really makes up for how scratchy some people find it I knit with a lot of Icelandic wool so the scratch factor does not even exist to me it's just this is fine it's golden next to skin no problem so I finished the first repeat of the lace Right now. Whoop, over the white. There you go. There's a little owl face there. This yarn is a lot chunkier than the yarn that's used in the pattern. It's a it's an Aran weight, whereas the pattern calls for a light worsted. So the pattern calls for about five and a half stitches per inch, and I have four. So I went down a few sizes, and I'm knitting it in the size 28, which I am not. I'm about a size 34. So the 28 makes up for the gauge. I might make it a little bit longer, but it should be okay. What I really like about this pattern is there's there's um, a lot of shaping, and also um, they have short rows for the bust, but in the pattern it goes by cup size. So if you're an A cup, you don't do any short rows. If you're a B cup, you do three, C cup, six, and then you just add more short rows for your cup size. So I think that's really well thought out. Not just being like, oh, well, you're a size 
36, you're knitting the 36, you must be a C cup. No assumptions are made, it's just whatever floats your boat. So I really, I'm enjoying that about this pattern. I'm not up to the bust shaping yet. I have about six or seven inches. The, the ribbing is four inches of ribbing. And then I have another three or four inches done. So I'm very pleased. It's just flying off the needles. It helps that the yarn is really bulky. I, I first cast it on using the needle size requested in the pattern, thinking that, oh, that'll make it up for, like, way too much of the gauge lost. Or not cast it on. I swatched. Just because the yarn was so different from the yarn in the pattern. I'm not usually a swatchist. I did not swatch for the portage. I really should have, but I definitely did not. But I swatched with this one and then noticed that on the four millimeter needles, it was way too dense and would have just been like crunchy. And because the yarn is already not the softest yarn, I think that the crunch wouldn't have been a great choice for this pattern. So I decided to go up to five and a half millimeter needles, which is really making the fabric I want. So I'm very pleased. It's a little airy. You can see through it a little, but not too much. And I think this will be a good indoor sweater. I have plenty of really warm Icelandic sweaters, so I don't really have a need for those, but I kind of need sweaters that I can wear indoors. So I think this will be a great choice. It's knitted bottom up, and then you knit the armpit, and then you knit the sleeves up to the armpit, and then you join everything in the round and do some shoulder shaping. So continuing the lace panel all the way up the back. So we'll see how that goes. I'm a little worried that the lace is huge like the holes are enormous especially in these whoop, eyeball holes but we'll see honestly if the lace is big it'll just balance out how warm this yarn is compared to the worsted that's used so that's yellow cardigan number two that was most of my knitting this week except for an fo i have so, um, I also went to the movies this week and I saw the new Captain America. Highly recommend it. But going to the movies means I just get sock knitting done. So I got this much of a sock done. This is about to here to the top is Captain America and here down is Tarzan. So all my sock knitting is movie knitting at this point. I really love this yarn. This is a Cascade fingering weight. That's a merino silk blend. I completely forgotten the colorway. It's in the like silk classic heritage. I am enjoying it. This is maybe the eighth sock that I knit out of this very yarn. It frogs well. Um, I tried several times to knit it. I, my boyfriend bought this yarn and there's the rule that if you buy the yarn you get free socks just so I don't have to spend as much money as I want on socks. But in his gauge at um, I think this is 66, 68 stitches. It just made this terrible pooling. So it just looked like very ink stained socks. And I was not digging it. So I tried it at 72 stitches on a smaller needle and it gave the exact same result. And I tried it with slipping stitches up and I tried doing a simple Skype sock, the SKKYP, and it wasn't really looking good. And so then I just put it in the stash. <laughs> And decided not to deal with it for a while and then we were headed to the movies so I was like okay I'm gonna give it another shot and just cast it on in my size and they look beautiful so these are my socks now even though they're not really my color I am going to wear them free socks so I'm doing my crazy forget about everything sock just because I mostly knit my socks in the dark so this time I started with the cuff because I didn't have anything to magic loop, I just had my 9 inch circulars. Dropped a few stitches here, but uh, this is my needle that I usually use. So it's just two little itty bitty needle tips and then a cable that goes through the whole circumference. Just especially because I need a lot in the dark and I can just keep going around and around and around and around and sock. So I might go to one more movie at this end and then I'll have two socks and then I'll wait months before adding a heel but I have this much yarn left 
and then I have this much yarn left, and then I have another one that I couldn't get myself to frog, but I'll frog it and then add it to this, or make a hexabuff, or make a dozen hexabuffs or something. But yeah, I'm very pleased with how this fabric is. It's absolutely beautiful. I like these little stitches, these little blips that are like, oh, I'm switching colors, I'm not sure yet, or there's some green ones. It's very exciting. Beautiful fabric. It's nice. It's not too dense. I I wish I were a knitter who knitted their socks at like nine stitches per inch. It's not who I am. I yeah. I'd like to like have bulletproof socks, but I I'm a loose knitter, so yeah, I'm going like seven, seven and a half stitches to the inch and I don't mind it. It's really nice. So that's everything I've worked on this week. I'm in cast on mode. Um I'm very much enjoying these socks. So that's that. Oh, that's all my works in progress. Um, hopefully, I would say I'm gonna get a sweater done this week, but I'm hoping to just get them both the body of the sweater done. Maybe. Maybe a sleeve. Two bodies and a sleeve. That's my goal. That might be a tough goal. We'll see. I'm not gonna say anything yet. I might get a lot of spinning done and just not knit anything, but that's never happened before. So that's never say never. So I'm hoping, yeah, I'm going to be knitting on both at the same time instead of knitting one, finishing it, and start the other just because I'm very excited about both. So we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Um, finished objects. I finished my Chittagong as I hoped I would. I finished it on Sunday, like I said I would, mostly because I left, <laughs> I just stopped. I called it off. I did not want to work on it anymore, so I decided not to work anymore. This is the Chittagong by Ann Weaver. Um, I was supposed to knit until I ran out of yarn, but I have about 8 grams left. Shoot me. Um, I have nothing to do with this mohair, it's not like I'm saving it for something, but I was done. I was really done knitting this. So this is the finished shawl. It's huge. I'm just gonna try and show you a part of it. It's this large square shape. I obviously bought, blocked it as soon as I finished it, but it has these woo, fun sections where the increases are. I really love it. I'm super pleased with how it came out. Once I bought, it took me like four hours to do the bind off. It was just the ne never ending bind off. I kept on just getting tired and being like, no, you want the finished object. Just finish it or you'll never bind it off. And so I finished it. Super happy with it. It's absolutely beautiful. I haven't figured out how to wear it yet, but that, whew, that's a thing for another day. I wore it to work on Wednesday, and I don't know. It looked a little silly, but it happens. So far, I've just been like taking it at two, two places and just calling it a fancy go around. But I end up with a lot of points on my shoulders, so and one really long point that goes all the way to like past my belt. So, I don't know. I'll figure something out. It's been living as a blanket on my couch for this week. And it looks beautiful. A lot of the stuff in my house is yellow. I'm a big yellow person, believe it or not. So, it, it works well. It's not coming out as yellow as it is in real life. This is coming out pretty much true, but the yellow in the shawl is a little more yellow. A little sunnier than it looks. Looks a little too sandy. That's okay. I'm very pleased with the finished object. Um, the last rows were about 16, 1700 stitches. That's why I called it quits. I could not, the row was taking me about an hour and a half. Uh, so I called it, that was the end. And yeah, I did a Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off, which I'm not usually a really big fan of, but it looks very clean here. I haven't woven in the ends. That would make too much sense. But it's very clean. It's a, it's actually a little too tight for this shawl because you can see there's more stretch underneath than this. This is just completely stretched. I usually only use Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off if I'm going to be blocking the finished object very severely. So this one I just blocked like to hell. There's no more stretch here. There is still stretch a little in the fabric, but I wanted I wanted these very dramatic points, so I just stretched out 
on the line of the increases as far as I could, as opposed to really opening up these increases like leaves. Just because I don't have blocking wires and I really like these straight lines that it's given me, as opposed to when it does like points out along the edge. But I could always reblock it if I decide that I don't like these pointy, pointy, pointy ends. But I'm very happy with the finished object. I had told myself I would finish it, and I did, which is a nice change. I have so many things on the needles that I just have stopped touching just because I've gotten tired of them. And I'm no longer in the mood. But yeah, it's it's an enormous. I have not measured the wingspan of it. But I am five foot six. And point to point, there's some droopage. So maybe it's like six feet wide at the widest. Very pleased with it. It was very satisfying that I'm yeah, I think I would wear it a lot if I knew how to wear it. I might look at people's project pages and look at how they're wearing it. I think that's what I'm going to do, figure it out that way. Do you have anything else? I don't think so. I did not do any speed spinning this week, as I said earlier. Spinning, I really enjoy spinning. I like like the medita meditativeness of it and just the like, it feels like knitting stocking net. It's just stitch, 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 same feeling to me, spinning and knitting stocking net, so sometimes you just need something a little more stimulating, and I haven't had really the feel for spinning right now, but it kind of comes and goes. The thing that I don't like that much about spinning is once you finish, once you have like a finished spinning object, you still need to knit it, so it's not a finished anything, <laughs> which I can wrap my head around, like, I, I get that. But I'd also wish I could just wear hand spun yarn and call that something that I've finished. But hopefully I'll have something cast on out of some hand spun soon. I have a skein that I've been meaning to cast on. I had an 8 ounce braid of Blue Moon Fiber Arts and I split it in half and sp spun 4 ounces for my friend for Christmas and then I love the yarn that I spun for her so I spun the exact same way for me. We're looking to knit the same thing out of it so that we're cute but yeah we'll see it's pretty i'll see what i cast on uh i don't i'm trying not to cast on anything this week i want to get these two sweaters done it's summer which means summer in iceland means sweater weather so i get to wear a sweater without wearing a coat on top so people get to see my fancy sweaters so i want to have two sweaters to wear for a summer both yellow i want a yellow binge Yellow! Everything's yellow. And if you think I don't have anything else to cast on that's yellow, I have this. I've been meaning to cast this on for a while. It's new-ish stash. Got it a few weeks before I started podcasting. But it's the Love Story yarn by Anna Magnusson. It's 100% Icelandic lamb's wool in a single ply lace weight. But I just haven't been able to figure out what I want to knit up. It's very, very, very skinny. You get 25 grams of ball, which is not nearly as much as I would like, but I'm very excited for it. So this is another thing. I, I was gonna, I'd originally intended to use this as the border on my Chittagong, but the yellow just doesn't work. It was too green. So I saved it for another project, but I'm not sure what yet. I'll figure it out. That's food for thought for the week. Maybe not cast on, but figure out what I want to knit with this. It's so fancy that I feel like if I make a bad decision, I'm wasting the yarn, as opposed to the 40 hours of time I spend on like a very elaborate shawl, but I'll, I'll feel like I'm wasting this fancy yarn because I don't have any more yarn, clearly. Um, but yeah, hopefully goals goals for the week. That would be a really nice segment. So goals for the week. Find a pattern for this. Add like 10 skeins to my yarn wool because I haven't done anything with it. I did wind my uh, portage yarn so I'll get to put that up so there'll be a nice like yellow line here soon. But yeah I want to get some more winding done. It's really pretty but I want it to be full. I think that's about it. I don't have... I have some stash adoptions this week where I got my lovely Madeline Tosh, this guy, 
but I bought I bought eight skeins. So this is what was added to stash. I don't think you'll ever see stash adoptions that aren't already cast on. Every time yarn comes into the house, I usually cast it on pretty much immediately. Yeah, I can't, I, there's no waiting. Even if I have like eight things on the needles, I'm just like, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Brand new. Always cast it on. I bought it online. Uh, from Jimmy Bean Wool. I really like their selection. They have a bunch of colors. If I had a yarn store local to me that sold it, I would probably pay double for it and just buy it there, just so it'd be in my hands about a week earlier. But nobody carries Madeline Tosh DK in Iceland. That'd be too easy. So, especially not sweater quantities. Nobody could afford a sweater quantity here. Not that people don't have money, it's just very expensive. Uh, single skeins of like hand painted sock yarn here. They just started carrying like Hedgehog and Vanillatage and other fancy things are about 4,000 kroner or about $32 American. So that's not really in my budget right now for socks, even though I've totally bought it a bunch of times. Like this one. Some nice hedgehog fiber I paid $32 for instead of just buying it from the website where they have flat rate shipping. I had to buy it to support my local yarn store. Hedgehog! Very lovely knit, but expensive. Um, other than that, other stash adoptions I bought, not here yet, won't get here till end of June. Uh, I bought my membership to the Stephen West Yarn Along. It took me about two weeks to decide whether or not I would, and finally I just, I snapped. I couldn't think about browsing Instagram for the all summer and just seeing these beautiful shawls that I wouldn't get to knit. So the Stephen West Yarn Along is he and his store, Stephen and, Pen Stephen and Penelope in uh, Amsterdam, are putting out three exclusive shawl patterns, and they're sending out exclusive yarn from, I think it was Hedgehog, uh, Woolmiza, and something Walk Collection, I think it was. Uh, Walk Collection and Woolmiza are German, and Hedgehog is Irish. So I'm really looking forward to that. They're all dying custom colorways just for the event. It was, it was a little on the pricey side, but it'll be my summer knitting. Nice shawls to have for the winter. And I'll get to make everybody else who did not buy it be really jealous. And I got to show it on here, so it's it's for the podcast. It's for the podcast. But yeah, that's about all my rambling. Uh, all the yellow that I can squeeze on screen for one last happy yellow shot. I'm in yellow mode. I've, if you're curious what color my handbag is, it's yellow. My, my chair, yellow. If I had a car, it would probably be yellow. I don't have a car. That'd be too adult of me. Um, my TV stand, yellow. My walls are bright. My kitchen is yellow. Everything's yellow. I'm in a, I'm in a yellow mode. It's just such a happy color. You can't, how can you be sad and have this beautiful cake with icing? Well, that's about it for the week. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Thanks everyone for tuning in. If you were a new viewer, which you probably are, Thank you for watching. If you're a returning viewer, you are probably the best person on earth for putting up with this for another week. Finger guns at you. Pew! So yeah, hope you have a lovely week. I will get some yellow knitting done and see you again next week. Bye!